In this module, we will discuss the relationship between z-scores and the normal distribution. A unique characteristic of the normal distribution is that the percentage area under the curve between the mean and any z-score is known and constant. In addition, the percentage area also tells us the percentage of scores that are associated with that section of a normal distribution. So for example, 34.13% of the area, and therefore 34.13% of the scores, lie between the mean and plus one standard deviation and the mean and minus one standard deviation. Therefore, 68% roughly of all scores, about two-thirds of the scores then, fall between plus or minus one standard deviation from the mean. So here's a normal distribution with different sections of area associated with different z-scores. Remember, a normal distribution is symmetrical. So 34.13% of the area, and therefore 34.13% of the scores, fall between the mean, which has a z-score of 0, and minus 1, and the mean and plus 1 standard deviation. So together, roughly 68% of all the scores fall between plus or minus 1 standard deviation. If we go out two standard deviations, we add another 13.6% to each of these chunks. So collectively, roughly 95% of all the scores fall between minus 2 and plus 2 standard deviations from the mean. And a little over 99% of all the scores fall between plus or minus 3 standard deviations from the mean. We also have what are known as z-tables that allow us to make some calculations regarding the percentage of scores that fall above or below or between scores that we're interested in. So in a z-table, once again a z of 0 is associated with the mean. Notice the description here. The title is the area between the mean and z in percent in the normal distribution. So the area between the mean and z. So let's take an example here, uh, an easy one. So a z-score of 1.0 is associated with a number in the table of 34.135. If we go back one slide, 34.13. So hopefully that rings a bell. So this number, 34.135, is saying how much area and by extension, how, what percent of the scores are between a mean, the mean of zero for a z-score, and plus one standard deviation, or a z-score of plus one. So 34% of the scores fall between the mean and plus one standard deviation. Now, these tables are symmetrical, so we ignore the, we ignore the signs. So we can just as easily do these calculations with negative z-scores. So if we were just imagine that this says negative 1, once again 34 percent of the scores fall between negative 1 standard deviation from the mean and the mean. And that is once again consistent with the numbers from our normal distribution here. So the percent of scores that exist between minus 1 standard deviation and the mean is roughly 34.13 percent. So now we can use this table to do some calculations, for example. So what percent of scores fall below a body weight of 85 kilograms? So we'll use our example data from the previous module. So let's say the mean is 79.4 and once again the standard deviation is 11.4. So we're trying to figure out what percent of scores fall below a body weight of 85 kilograms. Now right off the bat you should notice that 85 kilograms is above the mean. So we need to get a number that's greater than 50%. And if we get a number that's not uh, greater than 50% when we're all said and done, then we've done something wrong. But also notice that this table is symmetrical. So the trick is what we're going to do is we're going to find the area between the mean and whatever raw score it is that we're interested in. And then we're going to have to adjust for the other 50% of the distribution that is not going to be associated with our calculations. So hopefully that'll make sense as we work through the math here. So, 85 is the score that we're interested in. We want to know what percent of scores fall below that number. The mean is 79.4, the standard deviation is 11.4. So if you do the math, 85 minus 79.4 divided by 
11.4 gives us a z-score of 0.49. A z-score of 0.49, positive 0.49. So let's go to the table. A z-score of 0.49 is associated with an area of 18.78%. So if you do the math here, we say, okay, the percentage of scores that exist between the mean, which is 79.4 and 85, is 18.8% roughly. And then if we factor in the 50% of the scores that fall below the mean, we'll add 50% to 18.8% and we'll get an answer roughly 68.8% of the scores fall below a raw score of 85 kilograms. Let's do another example that's on the other side of uh, the distribution. What percent of scores are above a body weight of 70 kilograms? So if our mean is 79 and our raw score that we're interested in is 70, and once again our standard deviation is 11.4, first of all we should get a negative z-score based upon a raw score of 70 because 70 is less than 79. So if we do the math, 70 minus 79.4 divided by 11.4 gives us a z-score of negative 0.82. So if we go back to our z-table, ignore the sign for a minute, a z of 0 0.82 is associated with an area of 29.4% roughly. So 29.4% of the scores exist between a raw score of 70 and the mean, the mean being 79.4. So roughly 30% of the scores fall between the raw score and the mean, and then we add the 50% of the scores that exist above the mean, we get a number of roughly 79.4% of the scores are higher than a raw score of 70. And finally, hopefully this one will be easy, what score is at the 50th percentile? Well, in a normal distribution, the 50th percentile exists at the mean, so a raw score of 79.4 is the score at the 50th percentile. And finally, we can use z-scores as standard scores to compare measurements that exist on different scales. So, for example, let's say we wanted to compare someone's long jump performance versus their score on a gymnastics rating scale. So in this particular example, the subject scored negative 1.3 as a z-score on the long jump and had a z of negative 0.5 on the gymnastics score. So this person is better at gymnastics because they're closer to um, the mean than they are in the long jump. The long jump score is 1.3 standard deviations below the mean. The gymnastic score is only half a standard deviation below the mean.